Hi, in this Swift tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to use Python in our Swift application. So basically, we're going to run the Python script in our Swift app, which is also known as Python interoperability. So this might be useful when there's like a really useful like module or package you want to use in Python and that, that Swift doesn't have, so you might want to use and run Python in Xcode. So that is one use case of it. So first things first, we're going to create our Xcode project. Um, just to let you guys know that as of now, uh, Python kit, which is the, the package we're, we're going to use to run Python in Swift, doesn't have is not supported for iOS as of now because iOS doesn't have the Python interpreter and so that leaves us with Mac OS. So yeah, we're going to use the Mac OS app and click next. And for this, um, we're going to call it the Python inter uh, interoperability app. Yeah, Python interoperability interoperability. Wow, that's a, that's a long word. Okay, so we're going to use our Swift UI lifecycle and yeah, we're going to use Swift UI as the interface as well. Then hit next and save it. Okay, so once you're in, let's expand this out a little bit. So the first thing you want to do is grab the GitHub package. So how we're going to do that is just go to Safari and search up Python kit, Python kit. And then it should be the first search result, um, this one. And we're going to click on it and copy the URL of this. So command C. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to go to file in Xcode and go to Swift packages and add package dependency. So basically we're going to inject this package into our application. And over here it says search or enter package repository URL. So that is the thing that we copied, the URL that we copied here. So we're going to paste that and hit next and we want to choose branch is master there and then click finish and there it okay so we're good um you want to make sure that everything runs first so we're gonna hit the run button or command r okay good build succeeded succeeded and yeah Okay, so now that you have it up and running, we want to go into our project settings and under targets and setting capabilities, we want to delete app sandbox completely. So click that top right X at the top over here and delete. And under hardened runtime, we want to disable library validation since we don't want Xcode to check for our package, which is Python kit. Okay, and next up, we want to just create our Python file. So command N to create a new file and we want to select uh, an empty file. So I guess we're just going to call this file something like, um, we're going to call it Python. Okay, here. Python file for interoperability. And then make sure you add a .py to the end of the file as an extension to make sure that it's going to be a Python file. Okay, and just click next or, you know, just create the file and we're in. Okay, so we're just going to, in our Python file, create a simple function that returns back hello world. Okay, so 
we can define a hello world function. Keep in mind that this is in Python, so just gonna assume that you have some knowledge of Python. And yeah, um, we're gonna create this function and it's gonna return back hello world. Hello world, or you know, it doesn't matter. And make sure that we import sys or system. And yes, okay, save that. And we want to create another file. Um, just a swift file would be fine. And hit next. Call it run python code. Code, there. Hit create. And over here, we want to import our python kit. Make sure to choose Python kit and not Python. Okay, and under Python kit, we want to create a function that gets, that runs our Python script and loads into our application. So function run Python code. And we want to return back a Python object. So a Python object is basically every i guess every different type or custom types in python are count i mean they count as python objects like integers strings dictionaries and whatnot okay so first things first we want to get the file no we want to first import system first so python.import system sys and then sys.append, no, sys.path.append. And then we want to append our path to the Python file. So drag that in here. No way, that's the wrong file. <laughs> we want to drag the, uh, the Python file that we just created with the hello world function. So we want to get the path cut it and paste it like so remove that extra slash and to actually get our file we want to select like or type in let file equals to python dot import and the name of our file so python for no, Python file for interoperability. Okay. And make sure that we don't add the .py to our string or else it's going to mess it up. Okay, so we're going to access the file and run our Python code. And we're going to do it like this. So I want to get into the file and let response equals to file dot, you know, the function name. So hello world is our function. So we're basically going to go inside that file and call the function. And as we know, it's going to return a Python object. And therefore, we're going to return back response, which is also a Python object. You know what? Let's just print result as well. No, response, not result. Okay, so I want to go back into our content view and create a button. Action and run our python uh python file for interoperability function or no way the run python code function so we're going to call that and as our action block and as our label we're going to just going to say run python code all right and if we run it, we might get back an error. We'll see. Oh, never mind. Okay. 
hello world there you go so if you want to actually display as text we would do still run python code obviously but we would try and say text run python code no what am i doing uh hold on string interpolation Okay, there. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> Run Python code. Does that work? No, that's okay. Whatever. Um. Hmm. Okay. What? I'm so dumb. We're gonna print at state statement var show result. It's gonna be a boolean, and it's gonna be false for now. So when we run our Python code. We could return, no, not return. We could toggle the show result, show result toggle, And if show result is true, if show result, if show result is true, we could display our text. So, this is probably not the best way, but it works. Run Python code. Python code. Oops. There. Okay, this is really messy as of now. <laughs> the text and the string and the string inter in interpolation. So, yeah, bear with me. <laughs> Try and run that and see what we get. Hello world. Oh, and we get our result too. But you can't see it, so. Um, to do this, we want to try and set the frame of the window like you would do in a normal Swift UI iOS app. So, so dot frame width and height. We would set it as oh wait no max width because max width we don't need alignment max width and max height there and we're gonna set this as infinity that way we could expand the, the window as large as we want and just save it and run it and as you can see we could expand the window and select or click run python code and there you go there is your hello world at the very bottom of the screen one last thing if you just want to you know make it at the top you could just do something like v stacks you know v stacks and then like that oh wait v stack there Oh, okay, that didn't really do a difference for some reason. Oh, well, I know why. There. Move the dot frame to the end of, or I guess, yeah. There you go. Okay, hello world. So that sums it up for the first video. In the next video, I'll probably do like a list. Like you are gonna import a pandas file. No. A Python file that has, you know, a specific package that Swift doesn't have and we're going to use that and import it into our Swift application. And yeah, thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe or share. Haha. <laughs>